Welcome back to part two, building the USS Crockett by Dumas Products. I was playing 15. I found out as you start getting closer to the keel, uh, both ends will have to be immersed in the hot water. So use your bathtub and uh, it's going to take some forming here. It's it, it wants to bend, so that's why I use these clamps here to go ahead and hold that in there. These are planks 17 and 18. Just wanted to show you the, that angle on the front of the bow. Look how much you have to bend that thing. Of course, it was put in water first. Getting ready for the last plank to be put in. Here I made a poster board cutout. And in the last picture here, you'll go ahead and see the last plank in. Looks good. Step 17, when you have the hull planked, carefully remove the hull from the board. Add the top plank if you have not already done so. Well, we're gonna kind of skip this. We're gonna go ahead and sand it in place. That'll be uh, provide a rigid, solid foundation. And uh, I took the initial to go ahead and do uh, a little bit of sanding here. When you're done sanding the hull, you can go ahead and remove it from the board. Here I'm using a number two X-Acto knife with a three inch saw blade. And you want to get as low as you can, start removing it from the board. Work very slowly and cautiously. You don't want to bust things up, so start cutting away. All right, on page four, item 17, when you have the whole plank, carefully remove the hole from the board, which we did. Add the top plank planks if you have not already done so. And just, I made a mistake earlier. There were seven page of the instructions. There's actually uh, 12 to 13. Oops. Okay, the wood has, the plank has been sitting in some uh, water, hot water. And uh, I'm just using this as a, uh, so it forms up. Let it dry out and we'll go ahead and glue it. And we'll go ahead and do the other side. Also want to mention if the legs stick out a bit for, uh, the planks, just sand them down a bit. Went ahead and cut and formed, sanded and beveled two pieces for each side so the deck has would have something to uh, sit on. Also went ahead and epoxied on the inside to make sure that everything was sealed. No matter how good you are, you're always going to have gaps in, in those planks. And to uh, seal that up, use z epoxy, follow all the instructions, used a acid brush. Put this in where it's marked in red in a vise so no hair would uh, come off. Use the uh, gloves and a respirator. And found out after 20 minutes, uh, didn't need the respirator, but make sure you're using a well-ventilated area. Use parchment paper, make sure there's no ifs, ands, or buts, no drips. Use the uh, blue tape, make sure no bleed through. Didn't have any. Now it's time to sand the hull. Always use blocks never use your fingers i actually used a pvc connector a one inch pvc connector and a one inch pvc pipe to get the uh, round areas z epoxy the inside and the outside four ounces outside four ounces inside use a tack cloth in between sanding make sure you don't want to have any dust when you just go ahead and put the primer on and i used two coats of primer and this actually shows some of my bad areas. The Bondo could be considered a guide coat. Any low spots will appear like this. There's our primer and should be filled in with a filler or the Bondo. These are the rudder blocks and strut strengthening pieces that you have to make. They're epoxied in. This is a mapping diagram to show this actual where the shaft would be penetrating the hull. They used a 12 inch long 5 16 drill bit and turned it around ground the point to find the location, best location for it. These are the notches made for the motor blocks. 
between frames 8 and 9. Very minimal on the inside, a lot on the outside. Epoxy them in, let it dry. Several things have come up, and that includes the after main deck, and I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, ship alts, or is that mod alts? And the, uh, the rear hatch here will be enlarged, a little bit larger, so I can have access to the steering gear and the main shafts, etc. And also the uh, fiberglass and hull, it'll come up without leaving a gap here. So uh, right now it's just sitting there, and I wanted to make it come up all the way up to the top edge here. Also the here's the picture of my new design and this this here is the outside which will be replacing the this hatch here so everything here will be all one piece with the exception we'll have larger area for the steering gear There were some small gaps between the top deck and the hull, so I ran out of uh, Vitamia putty and started using the, the glazing and spot putty from Bondo. Works well. Also, it, those gaps could have prevented a, a good seal when you're putting the fiberglass cloth on. Top halves were laid down and glued. The edges were sanded to conform to the hull. The middle was filled in with a little bit of Bondo and sanded later. And went ahead and used two ounce fiberglass cloth. As I made the design, wanted it to make sure that it didn't move when everything was, the resin was being applied. And I used Scotch brand spray adhesive, made sure it didn't move. The front will have to be overlapped so you can get a good uh, resin coat and everything is well protected. And uh, on the, uh, this next picture, it'll show the first resin coat. And I added uh, three more light coats and developed a resin ridge on top, which will have to be sanded. After removing the excess fiberglass with a pair of shears, like we, we did here with the hatch, we also did the same thing with the hull, only did one side. As you can see, the blue tape is off of there now. That's because I went ahead and uh, trimmed it with your number 11 X-Acto knife and using 180 grit sandpaper and uh, almost to a 90 degree. And as you can see, it's in the rough stages. It's coming off. These are the drill bits, files, and on the right you see the stuffing tube and shaft. I used the 3 sixteenths going through the strut, through the hull, through frame 10, and then use the other tools from the inside of the hull going out and use the end of the 3 sixteenths drill bit for alignment. And actually that file, the 5 sixteenths file, was a perfect fit for the stuffing tube. As you can see, perfect. Minimum damage. This speaks for itself. Six millimeter masking tape. We used a clear crisp line. Used the dull red laser to make sure it was straight. Used the 1 16th inch rod supplied in the kit for the steering wheel. Step 26. Lay the lower cabin side on the bench, then place the upper cabin side, upper cabin, in position and mark the lower cabin side where C2 should be located. Note, the front edge of the upper cabin side extends one eighth of an inch forward of the rear edge of the bridge area of the lower cabin side in order to cement to the inside of the U cut out of C1. C3 is cemented immediately after frame nine. Step 27, cement the one inch square spruce to the inside surface of the right and left upper and lower cabin sides. Also cement a piece of 1 8 inch square spruce between the middle notches in C1. This strip will support the front edge of the lower cabin top. We'll do that later. Step 28. Assemble the lower cabin sides to C1. Here we'll just go ahead and do a makeshift mock-up here. 
and I'm going to make sure it's set at a 90 and glue it. We're in the model shipyard right now. We got the lower cabin installed non permanently, as you can see. There's tape over here C1, C2, C3, and C4. These areas here between the cabin and the deck, they must be measured very accurately because it's bowed out on both sides. So this micrometer came in very handy writing all the measurements down and right now so it's a, it's a good fit. We'll glue it up C1, C2, C3, 4. Lower cabin must fit in the recess of the hull and lower cabin also rest on frames 7, 8, 9, and 10. After trimming the sides, we must now mark the front around here so we can trim it, grind it down, and so the front piece will fit into the whole open whole area. For the windscreen to fit properly, you will have to have a channel like you did for the side windows all the way in the front for the windscreen. The angle on that is about 70 degrees. I went ahead and put the clear plastic on. And as you can see, it's rolled up from the box. And uh, I made a mistake by putting it on and it rolled up. Anyway, so I went ahead and got a, one of my flat dishes, filled it up with water, and gave it a couple minutes. It took a while inside the microwave. And this is what it should look like. Not that. Those red dots, they're landmark for the windscreen, so when I put it on, glued it on, it'll work. Also, take a look, went ahead and had some time to go ahead and put a coat of Bondo on. Cementing the starboard window in place along with the windscreen. Installing B2, make sure it's properly aligned, letting it dry, then go ahead and put your port window in. Then go ahead and install B1, make sure you read the instructions, and getting ready to go ahead and put the, the top of the cabin on. I had to chamfer that down, put an angle on it, make sure everything's level, and then uh, make sure you read this the instructions. So I had to let the uh, Bondo dry on the cabin. And I started working on the funnel, main funnel, and this was fun. Got it all together though. Thanks for watching part two. Part three will come up.